Happy Sentinels Tuesday, everybody. I got a comment recently that was like, man, you do so many of these videos for other people. You should show off your own stuff every now and then. Well, whatever your name was, you're in luck because it is that time again. Wave 5 of Sentinels, the MLP verse is almost finished. The variants are still being worked on, but the main decks are done and so I can show it off today. So our villain for the day is the great and powerful Trixie. Our hero is Fluttershy. And the environment is called Equestria Environs. It is basically a tour of Equestria, all these strange and terrible places that it contains, and all the horrible monsters that live in those places. I would first like to direct your attention to this little rules card that comes with Fluttershy. She has two special rules. The first one is split HP targets. If a target has two numbers in its HP box, the first smaller number is its starting HP, while the second larger number is its maximum HP. When that target enters play, set its HP to the first number. So you you'll notice all of her targets have this fractional HP box. This deck was a graphical nightmare. And in fact, both of these decks were, you'll see real quickly, Trixie had some shit that I had to pull out of my ass as well. But I think it did a pretty good job. The other rule is health icons. Healthy effects are active only when the target's HP is at its maximum value. Hurt effects are active only when the target's HP is at less than its maximum value. And targets in this deck may also have unmarked ongoing text that is always active. So again, with the buzzing buzzard over here, you can see he's got an end of turn effect if his HP is less than 6, and an improved end of turn effect if his HP is at 6. Worth noting, I made one of these cards for rarity as well, so if you have her saved off of my Tabletop Simulator mod, go resave the bag because it looks much nicer. A note card is not fashionable, but we're done with that. So, fighting alongside Fluttershy, we've got Fugue State, Parse, Pyre, and Rook City Wraith. Let's get started. Start of the game, Trixie enters play, Corrupted Shomer side up with the Alicorn Amulet into play, Dangerous Charm side up, shuffle the villain deck. Here's the Alicorn Amulet. It says this card is indestructible, increase damage dealt by Trixie to non-villain targets by one. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves of that. When this card is reduced to zero or fewer HP by a hero target, flip Trixie's villain character card, then move this card next to that target's hero and flip this card. Trixie is immune to non-villain damage. The start of the villain turn, destroy a villain ongoing card, and Trixie deals that card's sparkle number, non-villain targets with the highest HP, H-2 energy damage each. No card was destroyed this way, play the top card of the villain deck. At the end of the villain turn, play the top card of the villain deck. So, when you look at Trixie's deck, all of her cards have a little number in the bottom right corner, just like Night Mists. That was the whole mechanic in making this deck, and her cards work exactly the same way. So that's all we need to know. Let's get started. There's no villain ongoings in play at the start of the turn, so we play the top card of the villain deck. It is Horn Fusion. Play this card next to the hero with the highest HP. That's Pyre. The first time each turn this hero plays a card, they deal the hero target with the second lowest HP, two melee damage. The first time each turn this hero draws a card, they deal themselves two melee damage. So no fun there. And then she plays another card. Crack the whip, discover a target. I finally implemented definitive edition terms. So if you're not familiar with how those work, again, check my Tabletop Simulator mod. I have a little card sitting in the middle of it now that defines all of the terms. That being said, I also realized in creating these decks that there is an understanding in Enhanced Edition that if you have a card that plays another card out of a deck, that card is put into play. Putting cards into play is no longer a thing in Definitive Edition, so please just assume things are put into play. Summon them, discover them, doesn't matter, it's being put into play because very rarely this actually matters. All right, so we go in and we get Snips. We'll take a look at him in a minute. The hero with the most non-character cards in play either destroys one of those cards or discards two cards. Okay, somebody's got to discard two. I think it'll be Wraith because she's got an extra stun bolt we don't need. All right, end of the villain turn. Play the top card of the villain deck. Go figure. Showmare ship, discard the top card of the villain deck. That is a two. Trix deals the hero with the highest HP, that card's number of energy damage. So two to the highest, that is Pyre takes three, play the top card of the villain deck. Age spell, play this next to the hero with the most non-character cards in play, and destroy one of their non-character cards. Increase damage dealt to this hero by one. You know what, we'll just put that on Pyre again. All right, and the villain turn, discard the top card of the villain deck. Its number is a two. If its number is odd, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP, three melee damage, otherwise two players each discard a card. Okay, Parse and Pyre, because he's got two neutron force fields. All right, so our goal is clear. We have to kill the Alicorn Amulet in order to get Trixie into a spot where we can start actually fighting her. Let's do syntactic analysis. That's always a good way to start off, and of course we're going to do this on Fluttershy. Oh wow, I got the cottage and find a pet. So the Everfree cottage 
is her house. Reduce environment damage dealt to pets by two. This is really important. Find a pet. Each player either draws a card or reveals cards on the top of their deck until the target is revealed, puts them in their hand, and shuffles the other cards into their deck. So the other heroes are just going to draw, which is good because they've been discarding a lot already. What the hell? Fluttershy is going to discover a pet. It's squirrely. So then it says, summon a pet, salvage a pet, or play a card. A pet that enters play this way gains 2 HP. I got Squirrely, so I'm going to play him. He heals back to full. And then Parse will play the bottom card of her deck. It's another syntactic analysis. Let's keep doing it. I think she's only got two copies of that card. Okay, it's another find a pet and another pet. So we get Beaverton, Beaver Teeth. Everybody draw a card again. Uh, let's go looking for another pet. It's Harry the Bear. Okay, uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and summon a pet, specifically the Regal Eagle. And he heals up to full. Awesome! So, dude, Fluttershy is good and set up. <laughs> draw a card. Oh shit, Pyre drew a Rogue Fish and Cascade. That means he deals himself one damage because he's taking more damage. Okay, let's go ahead and play Fishing Regulator. <laughs> that'll be important later. Everybody tap a card in hand. Draw a card. Holy shit, it's another one. Okay, discard it, draw a card, and then put a cascade from your trash on top of your deck and destroy this card. Okay, we need to discard the top card of his deck at some point. Wraith is going to play Stunbolt, and we're going to go ahead and nerf Trixie's damage. Can't actually hit her, but Stunbolt still works. Alright, Fluttershy has all the things. We are going to play Harry the Bear because nobody's dealing damage yet. Her power is Animal Care. Three non-character hero targets regain a hit point each. Or I could use the Everfree Cottage's power, which is each target in your play area regains a hit point. It's going to be the same thing either way. I'll heal Beaverton and heal Harry. Draw a card. So, end of turn. Squirrely is at full, so I can draw a card. Beaverton is not at full, so I can destroy a non-target environment card, but there aren't any. If I get him up to full HP, I can work on getting rid of some of Trixie's ongoings. Regal Eagle is at full, so I can play a card. Let's play Hummingway. He's a good boy. He might not live, but that's fine. Harry the Bear is not at full, so just at the end of your turn, this card may deal target for melee damage. Hey, let's hit the villain. Why don't we do that? And then Hummingway deals a target one melee and one sonic damage. We'll hit Snips with that. If he's at full, he deals irreducible damage. If Harry is at full, he can actually prevent cards from dealing damage instead. All right, Equestrian Environs plays Quarry Eel. When this card is dealt damage, it becomes immune to damage until the start of the environment turn. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals a target other than itself with the second highest HP, H melee damage. That is Trixie. Cool. <laughs> She's going to soak damage for us. All right, start of the villain turn. We are going to destroy... Oh, yeah, you know what? I forgot to have him do Horn Fusion. The second lowest would have been, let's say, Beaverton. And then he drew cards, so... Okay, yeah, we're going to get rid of the Horn Fusion, which is a three. So she hits the three highest for two energy damage each. That is Parse and Wraith and poor Fluttershy. And then we play a card. Bouncy Ball. Play this card next to the hero. The most cards in hand. Trixie deals in two energy damage. And that's anyone but Wraith. First time each turn this hero would deal damage, redirect it to themselves. You know what? I'm going to give that to Fluttershy, because she doesn't deal damage. She has literally one card that lets her deal damage. End of turn. Play the top card of the villain deck. Banishing Dome. Play this card next to the hero with the second lowest HP. That is Pyre. Oh, this could be good. Targets in this play area can only deal damage to targets in this play area and the environment. Oh, sweet. So when he draws that Rogue Fishing Cascade, he'll just hit himself. And that's all that he deserves. All right, Snips discards the top card. It's Snails. Uh-oh. He has an odd number, so Snips hits the highest for three. That'll be Wraith. At the start of the villain turn, he will put Snails into play from the villain trash, so we need to take him out. Let's do a quick calculation. I will put Data Mining on the bottom of her deck. There's two villain ongoings in play. Power? Oh, look, it's Data Mining. Let's destroy the Age spell so Pyre takes less damage. Draw a card. Let's play this Cherenkov Drive. That's always good. Oh wait, okay, and then I want to skip his power, because he'll draw the Rogue Fishing Cascade. Oh no, he deals each hero with cards in their hand, three energy damage, so he just hits himself. Reveal the top card of my deck, and that's it. End of his turn, player may select a non-tapped card in their hand, and then use a power on it. Let's tap this Bear Call. Power is a pet regains 2 HP and deals a target 2 melee damage. That pet may then deal each other non-hero target 2 melee damage. If it does, destroy this card. We'll go ahead and heal Beaverton, and he'll go ahead and hit Snips for 2. We won't do the extra damage off that. Alright, Wraith is going to play Combat Stance. She'll nerf Trixie, draw a card. Fluttershy is going to go ahead and play Rabbit Roundup. When this card is play, a target regains 2 hit points. Let's heal Hummingway. When one of your pets would be destroyed, you may prevent that destruction and restore that pet to 3 HP, then destroy this card. 
power, let's go ahead and use the Everfree Cottage so she can heal herself, and Beaverton and Harry the Bear draw a card. Draw another card. Beaverton has nothing to destroy. I can play a card. I'm gonna play the Giant Monarch. He's got one on two hit points. Harry will hit the Amulet for four. Hummingway will take out Snips. And the Giant Monarch, at the end of your turn, this card may deal a target one psychic damage. If he's at full HP, a target dealt damage this way deals another non-hero target three melee damage. So we'll just go ahead and hit the Quarry Eel for one. It's immune to damage. Oh, look, now it's not. Mod's Campsite. Heroes are immune to environment damage. At the start of the environment turn, each hero either regains two HP or draws a card, then destroy this card. Well, that's pretty nice. Quarry Eel is still going after Trixie, trying real hard to chomp on her to no avail. Alright, start of turn. Banishing Dome is destroyed. Trixie deals the five non-villain targets with the highest HP, two energy damage each. So that is all four heroes and Harry. Wraith tries to hit back to no effect, and we move on. Knocked off balance. Play this card next to the hero with the most cards in hand. That hero discards cards until they have three cards in hand. That is Parse. Reduce damage dealt by this hero by one. Oh, that's fine. She doesn't care about that. So let's see, what three cards do I want to keep? End of turn for the top card of the villain deck, it's the Golden Throne. At the end of the villain turn, discard the top card of the villain deck. Trixie and the Alicorn Amulet each regain that card's number of HP. And notice this one's a zero. She can with occasionally. So let's go ahead and do that. That's a three. This is a very easy card to keep track of because either the Alicorn Amulet heals or Trixie here heals. She can't be dealt damage right now. Okay, Pars is going to play Critical Multiplier. Play the bottom card of her deck. Buffer Overflow, nice, that'll be good. Draw a card. Let's play Chromodynamics. And we'll go ahead and use its power. Discard a card, hit the Alicorn Amulet and the Throne. Draw a card. Do we want to tap anything here? Let's tap Throwing Knives and hit the Amulet and the Throne. I think we'll go ahead and play that Throwing Knives. Pyre hits the Amulet for one. Nerf Trixie, draw a card. I'm gonna play a lovely picnic. Five targets not at full HP regain two HP each, so you can't cheese this and just heal all of your pets. When a non-hero target regains hit points this way, reduce damage dealt by it by one until the start of your turn. I don't actually need to heal the eel, so we're going to heal the monarch, Harry, Beaverton, Fluttershy, and Pyre. That was helpful. Power will use the house, so she heals Harry and herself. Draw two cards. Beaverton is finally at full HP. At the end of your turn, destroy up to two ongoing and or environment cards. If two cards are destroyed this way, this card deals itself two reducible psychic damage. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll take out the quarry eel, and we'll also take out knocked off balance, which will mean extra card plays, but we've got buffer overflow now, so we can kind of deal with that. And then he hits himself for two. I can play a card. How about this bear call? Pyre hits this for one. Harry will hit the throne for four. Hummingway will hit it for two. Oh, and then the monarch will hit the amulet, which will take out the throne. Excellent. Fluttershy herself cannot deal damage, but her pets pour it out. All right, start a turn. Everybody either heal two or draw a card. All right, Equestria Environs. Oh, we get our first Environ, Froggy Bottom Bog. This card and display destroy all other environs, then summon the Kragodile. So that means we search the deck and trash for it, put it into play, and if we search the deck, shuffle it. This change cut down on so much card text. All right, targets with two or fewer HP cannot deal damage. Oh, sorry, Monarch, you're out of luck. The Kragodile says reduce damage dealt to this card by one. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals a non-monster target with the second highest HP, three melee damage. That's still Trixie. We need to do more damage. All right, speaking of Trixie, oh, there is an ongoing there. That is a three. So she hits Fluttershy, she hits Parse, and she hits Pyre. All right, crack the whip. I don't think she has any targets left in her deck. Nope, she's only got the three. Here are the most non-character cards in play that destroys one of those cards or discards two cards. I'm going to destroy the Monarch since he can't deal damage right now. Sad face, but what are you going to do? Don't worry, I can get him back. And then end of turn, she plays a card. It's another Banishing Dome. Second lowest is Wraith or Parse. I'm going to just let this go on Parse. Yeah, we can just deal with that. Okay, okay, okay. Between the lines, Pyre hits the amulet for one. I know, we'll let Fluttershy use the bear call. Let's heal Beaverton and have him hit the amulet for two irreducible damage. Play the bottom card of her deck. Extra sensory awareness, cool. Draw a card. Let's play this Half-Life. He hits the amulet for one. Let's do Particle Collider. Oh, I put it in my hand, tap it till it leaves its hand, shuffle my deck, then I play it so he hits this for one. Pyre deals each non-hero target zero energy damage. Good luck with that. We'll go ahead and use Particle Collider. One player may play a tapped card now. Hmm, don't have any. We'll just deal the amulet one energy damage, draw a card. End of turn, someone can tap a card and use its power. 
I will tap this whole cladding and use its power. Draw two cards and then discard the card. Yeah, that's cool. All right, suit yourself. Nerf Trixie's damage, draw a card. Uh, time to start dealing actual damage. All right, I guess I'm gonna play the Buzzing Buzzard because I don't have anything else really to play. At the end of your turn, if he is not at full, he deals the three non-hero targets the lowest HP one sonic damage each. Otherwise, he hits everything for two sonic damage, which is, you know, much better. Let us use the tree's power, heal herself, and Harry is at full and heal the buzzard. Draw two cards. Beaverton. Beaverton's going to destroy Froggy Bottom Bog. That may not matter much, and I guess it's silly that I destroyed the monarch, but whatever. He doesn't hurt himself. I can play a card. How dare you? When this card enters play, you may play a pet from your hand or trash. How about the monarch? Not the monarch! Just, just the monarch. When a pet is destroyed by a villain card, a villain target deals itself to psychic damage. This is great, because I can get Trixie started hurting herself. The start of your turn, destroy all other copies of this card. So you can have two of these out at a time. Potentially three of them out at a time, if you really wanted. But you'll only keep one at a time. Harry. So if he doesn't deal damage, you can select a target. If it's a character, you prevent the next damage it would deal. If not, it cannot deal damage until the start of your next turn. That being said, we need to hit the amulet. Humming Way will do two damage to the amulet. The buzzard hits the amulet, he tries to hit Trixie, he tries to hit the Kragodile, and then the monarch will hit the amulet for one, and that will hit the Kragodile for two. Actually, that can hit Trixie for three. Yeah! Alright, Equestrian Environs. Flame Geyser Swamp. When this card is played, destroy all other environs, then summon the Chimera. This is the one that I always forget what it does. The first time a card enters play each turn, deal the target with the second highest HP, two fire damage. So, the Chimera entered play, we hit the amulet for two. End of turn, the Kragodile hits the amulet for three, and the Chimera deals the two non-monster targets with the highest HP, three melee damage each. That is Trixie, who's immune, and the amulet. It's no longer the second highest. And then this deals the target with the second lowest HP, one toxic damage. That is the Monarch, who soaks it because of Everfree Cottage. Whew! Alright, start of turn. Banish Dome is destroyed. She hits the five highest for two each. And the fifth highest is the Chimera. Cool. Giving almost as well as she got. Plays another Horn Fusion. This goes next to Wraith, unfortunately. End of turn. We play Tickle Torture. Discard the top card of the villain deck. That's a four. Uh-oh. The hero with the most cards in hand discards that card's number cards from hand. Oh! Yeah, it's gonna be Pyre and he'll keep the thermonuclear core. Then if they have no cards in hand, they deal themselves two psychic damage and draw cards. So it's not super awful, but it's could be awful. He could have discarded his whole hand. That's it. All right, time to get rid of this stupid fucking amulet. Targeting arrow. Let's play the bottom card of our deck. Between the lines, instead of Flourish, I do Bear Call. Heal the buzzard, hit the amulet for three. Draw a card. All right, Pyre's gonna play thermonuclear core because it's the only thing he's got. Select an untapped card in your hand, tap that card until it leaves your hand. I don't got any. Power will do Particle Collider. Nobody has a tapped card that they want to play, so he will deal the thingy two energy damage, draw a card, and then... Okay, we can tap a card and use its power. How about this Bear Call? Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and... I guess I'll heal the Monarch with that, because he's the only one who's not at full. Have him hit the Amulet for three, and then we'll discard it and have him hit the others for two. That's cool. And then at the end of your turn, a player with no tap cards in their hand may draw a card and tap it, and that will be Pyre. All right. Okay, Wraith is playing Razor Ordnance, which means she hits the second lowest for two melee damage. That is Humming Way. Doesn't kill him, it's fine. And then she's going to go ahead and Razor Ordnance the Amulet for four. Trixie's dealing full damage at this point. Okay, let's play Fuzzy Legs. He's a spider. Power, I'm going to use the Bear Call. Heal Humming Way, have him hit the Amulet for three. Draw two cards. Oh shit, see? I completely forgot about the Flame Geyser Swamp. Okay, ev everybody just take two damage. Okay, we'll have Beaverton take out the Flame Geyser Swamp, because that's a really annoying card. I can play a card. Oh, how about the Orthros? Harry will drop the amulet. So, we flip Trixie's villain character card. She flips two great and powerful duelist. Trixie's immune to damage dealt by non-villain targets outside of the opponent's play area. Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. When a villain ongoing enters play, place it next to the opponent. Redirect all damage Trixie would deal to non-villain targets to the opponent. If the opponent is incapacitated, Trixie wins the duel. The heroes are banished. Game over. At the end of the villain turn, Trixie deals the opponent two energy damage. Then a player may move Zakora's amulet to their play area. Then if they do, or if no villain ongoing cards entered play this turn, play the top card of the villain deck. What is this talking about? Well, let's flip the amulet and find out. This flips to Zakora's amulet. It is no longer a target. 
So it moves into Fluttershy's play area, which has become the villain play area at this point. It says, when flip to the side, destroy all villain ongoing cards in this play area. There aren't any. The hero next to this card is Trixie's opponent. Oh, let's just move this over here. The first time each turn a player would play a card, use a power, and or draw a card, they may have the opponent do it instead. So this goes from trying to wrest the amulet away from her to beating her in a one-on-one -on -one duel. And it's Fluttershy who has to do this. Well, continuing on, Hummingway will hit Trixie for two. The buzzer goes off, he hits Trixie and both of the environment targets. The Monarch will hit the Chimera. Oh, let's see, no, I can't do that. It has to be the way right now. Okay, so the Monarch will hit Trixie and have her hit the Chimera for three. Fuzzy Legs, at the end of your turn, this card deals a target one toxic damage. He'll hit Trixie. If he was at full HP, we would reduce the damage she deals by one until the start of my turn. That would be a good idea. And the Orthros, at the end of my turn, deals the two non-hero targets the highest HP, two melee damage each. That's Trixie and the Cragodile. If it was at full HP, it would deal up to two targets, two melee and one toxic damage each. So it becomes a little easier to control, just like the Buzzard. And that's Fluttershy's turn. Equestria Environs, Tatsel Worm. Oh, and it's worth noting, this ongoing over here is now over here permanently, and I actually didn't want to draw a card with her. The Tatsel Worm. When this card is reduced to zero or fewer HP, each hero target regains three hit points. At the start of the environment turn, this card deals the three targets of the highest HP, H toxic damage each, and shuffle this card in the environment trash into the deck. So things just took a turn for the oh my god. Trixie plays Showmare Ship, discard the top card of the villain deck. It's a three. She hits the opponent for three damage. Play the top card of the villain deck. Tickle Torture. Discard the top card. It's a two. This one still affects anyone. Here with the most cards in hand, discards two cards. That can be parse. Yeah, that can be parse. We'll increase the next damage. Let's say Harry deals by two. He's got cards in hand so nothing else happens. End of turn. She hits Fluttershy for two. Then we can move the amulet to someone else's play area. I think I'm going to let Fluttershy do this one more round because the pets just deal so much damage. But after that, we'll move it to the Wraith. No villain ongoing cards entered play, so we play the top card. It's the Gender Switcher. Play this card next to the hero with the fewest non-character cards in play. That means the opponent. Swap their hero character card with a random variant from the box. Okay, well, so you get a sneak preview of the variant, which normally would be waiting until a later game. It's new Fluttershy. We'll use her power a little bit later, probably. This hero may not use powers on cards in their play area other than their character card. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. All right. Parse place segmentation fault. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Increase Harry's damage by one more and destroy... Oh, I'm actually going to destroy Horn Fusion. It's a very annoying card. Draw a card. Let's play this Atomic Punch. He will hit the Tatsil Worm for one. Select two non-tap cards in a player's hand. How about Rabbit Roundup and a Lovely Picnic? Tap both of them, and he deals a target two energy damage. Let's have that be the Tatsil Worm. You know what? I think I forgot to have these guys go do their stuff. That should have hit Wraith, who hits back for one. And the Chimera tried to hit Trixie. Hit, oh, let's say Parse. And then it hit Fuzzy Legs. Except he soaks it. Right. Important. All right. For his power, let's do Chromodynamics. He's got one card left. Take out the Chimera. Hit the Tatsil Worm. Probably not going to kill it. We'll see. Draw a card. End of turn, we can tap a card and use its power. We'll just tap that critical multiplier, and then he can draw a card and tap it. Cool. She'll play Throat Jab on the Tatsil Worm, so at least if we can't kill it, it won't hurt anybody. And then she'll hit it for three, and then she'll let Fluttershy draw a card. I'm going to play another copy of Rabbit Roundup. We'll use that to heal... I guess we'll heal Fuzzy Legs, because he'll actually be useful if we do that. So, new Fluttershy's power is Assert Yourself. Fluttershy deals a target one irreducible psychic damage. A pet that takes damage this way gains its healthy text instead of any hurt text until the start of your next turn. I'm going to hit the Orthros with that. Draw a card. Draw another card. Beaverton Beaver Teeth is going to destroy the Cragodile. And actually, there's an ongoing out, isn't there? Yeah, and then we'll destroy Gender Switcher. He'll hit himself for two. I can play a card. How about, ooh, how about Elizabeth? Reduce damage dealt to her by one. When a pet would be dealt damage, you may redirect it to this card. Harry the Bear hits Trixie for seven. Hummingway hits her for two. The Buzzard goes off, hits Trixie and the Tatsil Worm. Okay, if anybody can deal damage, we're taking the Tatsil Worm out. Oh, hey, the Giant Monarch hits Trixie for one. Trixie hits a Tatsil Worm for three. So we all heal three. Orthros is at full, Elizabeth is at full, so at the end of my turn, she'll deal a target one melee damage. We might be okay. Fuzzy Legs hits Trixie for one and reduces her damage by one. The Orthros will hit Trixie for three, because he has been encouraged, shall we say. And Elizabeth hits Trixie for one. Yeah, one more round and we're done. Okay, Equestrian Environs plays Hayseed Swamp. 
This card is played to destroy other environs and summon the Flash Bees. In the environment turn, each target with even HP regains a hit point. Does anybody have HP? Yeah. Fluttershy does, Pyre does, Parse does. All of her pets with even HP are at full. Oh wait, except for Beaverton, he heals too. Flash Beast says when this card will be dealt damage, reduce that damage to one. And in the environment turn, this card deals the X targets other than itself with the highest HP, one lightning damage each, where X is this card's current HP. So the five targets with the highest take one each. That's Wraith, who hits it back for one. That's not actually going to change anything. And Pyre, and Parse, Fluttershy, and Harry, who soaks it. Yeah, okay, Fluttershy is still the opponent. Weather Spell, discard the top card of the villain deck. That's a two. Trix deals that card's number, non-villain targets with the highest HP, two irreducible cold damage each, which means she hits Fluttershy for four, because it gets redirected. End of turn, she hits the opponent for two, reduced to one, and then we play the top card of the villain deck. She goes through her deck real fast. It's an age spell. Ah, destroy one of their non-character cards. How about, mm-hmm, who's the least useful here? Let's destroy Elizabeek. I mean, she just came out, but I kind of don't really need her at the moment. So how dare you goes off and Trixie hits herself, well, just for one. But hey, that's one more damage. Increased damage dealt to this hero by one. Well, it's a good thing we're about to finish this game. All right, Parse will give her card play to Fluttershy, who plays Find a Pet, so everybody can draw a card. Lord knows they need it. Do I have any pets left in my deck? Oh, the bat. I've actually got quite a few pets left in my deck. Let's summon one of them. How about the jackalope? It heals too. All right, Parse will... I shall discard a card, just increase the next damage dealt by a pet by one, and destroy the age spell. Draw a card. All right, Pyre's gonna play Fracture Control Rod, and then Particle Collider. Let's play Critical Multiplier. Parse deals the Flash Bees of damage. No sense in destroying a copy of Thermonuclear Core. Draw a card. So you can tap a card and use a power on it. Oh, let's, let's tap this Razor Ordinance, hit the Flash Bees for one more. And then a Parse can draw a card, tap it. All right, Wraith gives her play to Fluttershy, who plays Dark and Mysterious Bat. He starts with one hit point. End of your turn, this card may deal a target two sonic damage. And if this is at full HP, destroy a target reduced to three or fewer HP this way. She will hit the Flash Bees for a whole big one. Draw a card. All right, Fluttershy, we'll play another Find a Pet. All of your friends need cards. We find, ooh, Angel Bunny, I'm gonna play him. So all of her targets are labeled Pet because synergy with the other decks, but in the way that every pony hero has a pet of their own, Angel Bunny is her pet pet. So if he's hurt, when Fluttershy is dealt damage, this card deals the source one melee damage. But if he's healthy, the first time Fluttershy and any pet are dealt damage each, Turn by a non-hero target, this card deals the source of that damage to melee damage. So he's angry and he retaliates. Power, I'm gonna do the tree. Who needs healing? Beaverton. Orthros is now at full. The Jackalope's now at full. Heal the bat. Draw two cards. Beaverton will destroy the Flash Bees because he can. I can play a card. How about Little Piggington? Just for the hell of it, it's got 2 HP. At the end of your turn, reveal and replace the top card of a deck. If this card is healthy, you may discard the top card of a deck or bury the top card of a trash. So a little bit of deck manipulation. Harry hits Trixie for 5 because of the plus 1 from Parse, and Hummingway takes her out. Let's see, Hummingway hit, takes her out with 2, the Buzzard hits her for 2, the Monarch hits her for 1, there's nothing for her to hit, Fuzzy Legs hits her for 1, the Orthros hits her for 3, the Jackalope, oh yeah, if it's hurt, it deals the non-hero target with the lowest HP 3 melee damage, otherwise it deals the target 3 melee damage, and the Bat hits her for 2, and yeah, so Trixie's down to negative 13 hit points, I think we win. This is a very good matchup for Fluttershy because Trixie doesn't care much about hitting minions. She's here to kill a hero. So that's it for this game. You can find all three of these decks on Walker's Workbench. I won't go through the whole thing. You saw like 90% of Fluttershy's deck as it is. Thank you for watching. As always, Tabletop Simulator, the Reaver Sentinel's Cauldron DLC, and Walker's Workbench are not licensed against products. Please support the official release and flip.